Uh. Hey, welcome back. Here we are, Wednesday, Shasta College, Humanities 2. It's about 7 o'clock in the evening after the end of another very hot day. Um, hope you guys are staying cool out there. Um, hope you're all participating in the discussions uh, from last week. Uh, it ends tomorrow, and I do put an ending date on it, so get you on tomorrow at 5 o'clock or forever hold your peace. And I do look at those as part of your participation. And uh, so, you you know, you need to pipe in. Uh, so please do on Hamlet. And when I'm talking, when I ask you guys to watch like a video of the Hamlet play, I know it's a challenge. Believe me, uh, I know uh, it's not, um, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves or Mel Gibson running around in, in fast cars. I, I get it. Uh, it takes a discipline to sit through a Shakespeare play, let alone read one. Um, maybe you guys have read some text. It's not easy, uh, but it's not supposed to be. Uh, it's a challenge, and that's what makes it worthwhile. And you ask yourself this question. Why are we still performing Shakespeare five, um, 600 years after his death? Worldwide, right now, not during the pandemic, of course, but there are designated theaters. Ashland is right up the road from us here in Reading. And the uh, Toronto Stratford Theater, does, that's all. They do Shakespeare and noon plays. London, they have the Old Globe Theater. They're still doing plays there in the original theater. A rebuilt version of how Shakespeare did it. And guess what, folks? There's no roof. And so when it's raining, people wear rain jackets, and it's packed. Go look at it up on YouTube. See the productions they do there. They're really entertaining, and they're there to keep the, the common folk entertained. They're not just there for snobs who only get Shakespeare. Uh, so when you're looking at something like Hamlet, which is, uh, I chose that because it's such a classic story and it's the one so many people know uh, because maybe you've seen a film. There have been many films made. Maybe you've avoided things, <laughs> but maybe you're, you're now embracing it. Uh, because it's a lifelong embrace. Once you get into Shakespeare, it never shakes you. You are forever analyzing, trying to figure out. And uh, that's the beauty and the depth of his work uh, that continues to this day, all these hundreds of years later. So uh, I'm not asking you guys to look at these videos and give it a thumbs up or thumbs down like I'm bored or I don't get it or I don't like the way they did things. It's, it's to look at the material that's presented. Try to analyze what they're doing. Listen to the language. Watch the actors. Look at the direction. Um, is, it, is it making sense? Is, are you seeing the reasons why it still resonates all these years later? Uh, so that's what I want you to look for, and I'm going to keep stressing that in these essays. I'm going to sign an essay uh, tonight because uh, it's Wednesday, and um, I might give you a couple options on what to write the essay about, but I'm going to post it uh, soon, and it'll be new next Monday, the 29th. Um, so I want to talk about, we'll get out of the theater for a minute, um, I could spend a lot of time there because it's one of my passions. I've written a couple of plays, had them produced, and um, it's a great way to tell the, the story and uh, have an audience, live audience listening to it. Nothing like it. If they show up. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to talk about, we started this week on Painters. Chapter 23 is, is about the era we're in in history of the world 
it's in European history and and the important painters of the time. I want to talk about two painters today and uh, you'll write one of your papers about one of them are the Dutch painters. Um, who here has been to the Netherlands? Who knows what it is? Maybe you've heard of Holland. It's in the Netherlands. Uh, Rotterdam, it's in the Netherlands. Um, that's where these painters came from. And uh, they're very, very famous now. One of them was very famous in his time, Rembrandt. You've heard of him. Um, he was very, very, very popular in his time. He made money, but he died broke because he refused to paint what the public wanted. And the public wanted portraiture. This is long before cameras were invented. And so he made a great living on painting portraits, mostly of rich people, because that's who could afford uh, having their portrait painting. And uh, his portraits are famous. One day, hopefully, you guys will travel and you will go to the Netherlands and you will go to Holland, Amsterdam in particular, and you'll go to the Rijksmuseum. It's an incredible, huge, wonderful place to get lost in. And much of Rembrandt's major works are housed there. And um, And you should see them in person and they will humble you. They're like the Star Wars of their day. Long before movie cameras are invented, he was painting incredible stories on canvas. And um, I had the pleasure to go to Holland and I spent time in the Rex Museum, which was under remodel, a 10 year remodel when I got there. But, uh, the fun thing about it was they kept the whole bottom of it open to get, because they still needed to make money to get tourists in there. And so I got to see most of Rembrandt's uh, major works, um, but not, you couldn't wander around the museum. Now you can, they reopened it a couple years ago. It's an incredible, huge place. Um, and so you get to see some of these paintings close up and it's, it's really humbling and awe-inspiring to see that a human being did this with his hand, with a paintbrush. Uh, long before, if you go down to your local art store and buy this stuff, uh, it, was, uh, it was a craft because they had to make the canvases, they had to make the painting, and um, later that all changed with the invention of tube painting. That comes in... A little later, but it changed everything, but not yet. Uh, anyway, the, I want you guys to look at this documentary on Rembrandt. It's called The Power of Art. I will post the link and put it on the assignment. It's The Power of Art, uh, and it's just on Rembrandt, and it's 58 minutes long. BBC does a good job uh, of giving us a good look at Rembrandt's life. Watch that video. It's going to take you an hour to sit and watch it. Make notes because you're going to write your paper about it. Um, when you're looking at it, things to look for. Look at the historical context of when Rembrandt existed. It was the age of enlightenment. Things were changing rapidly in Europe mostly, not U.S. yet. We're still too new. And... People are educated. People are actually have higher education. Lots of people actually know how to read. I know that sounds far-fetched, but very few people actually knew how to read hundreds of years ago. Uh, mostly uh, monks in monasteries uh, were the readers, and they're the guy actually writing, not writing the books, not making the language up, but they were transcribing books. That's how they got the the books out into the public. More people are reading than ever before. There's what they call leisure time, not like what we think now where you get five weeks of vacation a year, but they, they didn't have to, uh, they could kick back a little and enjoy their lives more than they ever had before. Um, 
there was actually a renaissance and um, things were happening with art, science, engineering, architecture, writing. Uh, it was all happening, coming together at one time because the world was changing rapidly. And these city towns, uh, Rotterdam was a port town. It's in the Netherlands, Holland. And so when ships are coming in, they're bringing in not only new ideas from out in the world, because they've seen things, they've been to those places, they're bringing in products from those areas into these towns, and people are seeing uh, products that they've never seen before, whether it's material for clothes or farm implements, different sorts of grains and vegetables, they're all coming in because it's a port town. And so when you have a port town like Rotterdam, you're going to have a lot of uh, influx of the world coming into your spot, your tiny spot. And that's going to change things. And so these Rembrandt was seeing that. He saw it every day. He saw the change coming. He saw the new world was coming to his doorstep. And he was painting it as fast as he could. And, um, but he does at one time break off from painting portraits and he painted this a hugely famous painting called The Night Watch. Uh, it's, there's a small picture of it in your book, but you can go online and look at The Night Watch. There's a documentary just on The Night Watch. Uh, check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. And um, when you see The Night Watch in person, it it's, uh, makes you feel small, humble, that a human being uh, conceived and painted it. But it was controversial at the time. And after it came out, he started losing patrons because they didn't want that sort of painting. They wanted the usual portraitures of rich people looking wealthy in their fancy clothes. And he didn't want to paint that anymore. And so he started losing patrons, and this, you'll see it in the documentary. So what drives an artist to not give the people what they want? What drives an artist to go his own way? Uh, to stop the patrons from giving him money. Uh, why would someone do that? So look at the documentary, and maybe you can figure out why. I'm not going to tell you why, because we're still discovering why. Why does anybody do anything <laughs> what they do? What motivates people? And so what motivated Rembrandt from, to walk away from the for sure bucks? It's like filmmakers right now um, who don't want to play the game of making endless sequel of the next X-Men franchise or the next... Um, Is it John Wicks? Is that what they call it? The Wicks episode, episodes? I just saw the last one with Keanu Reeves. There's more killing in that, and nobody has any problem with it, of course. If you have a sex scene or uh, you see a nude body, people go crazy. But in this, if you've seen the new uh, John Wick movie, he essentially kills people over and over and over again. One shot to the head isn't good enough. It has to be five or ten bullets to the head. That's what we like to look at now. Someone being shot in the face five times, and then they're thrown away like a bag of garbage. They have no meaning. These lives have no meaning. It's a video game. Now, Keanu makes a boatload of money on this. No matter what he says, it being an artistic expression of his artist desires, he's getting lots of money. And so... He's getting lots of money to kill people in what looks like a cool way. And let me tell you, folks, killing people is not cool. Not in real life. Only in Hollywood fake life. Uh, fairy tale life. Anyway, so 
So essentially, Rembrandt could have kept making a nice living, and he walked away from it. Why? So when you're looking at this documentary, uh, try to see if you can come up with an answer. I know it's just one documentary. I'm not going to make you read much. Whatever's in the book provides. There's some stuff in the book, the text. Uh, but it, the book, like uh, this class, it's a survey class, meaning we just hit on these things kind of in a surface way. Uh, when you guys get to one day, hopefully you go to um, a four-year college or grad school and you will hit a subject like Rembrandt and you will go into it in depth. Um, when I was in film school, I would study Elie Kazan in one class for the whole semester. Orson Welles, one class for the whole semester. You go in depth when you go into four-year college and grad school. And so I can't, we can't do that in this class, especially in only six weeks. So we could, we could just do a survey, get in there, touch down, learn a little something about the times these people lived in, learn a little something about these people. And remember, this is long before video cameras or social networking. So a lot of that's passed down oral stories. So check that documentary out and write a detailed analysis on the subject, not criticizing whether you like the documentary's style. Look at the man. Critically look at the man and, and try to see if you can understand him. And I don't want you to uh, go to Wikipedia, although that's fine to go research. That's okay, but just don't do a copy and paste job. Uh, I want you guys to base it on this documentary. you got to put some work in on it. It's not a research paper about, um, it's about a critical essay based on this documentary. And that's important because we're not in, normally if we're in class together, I've mentioned this before, we'd be watching this together in class. You'd be forced to watch it. But now you have to watch it on your own and I have to trust you're watching it on your own. And you have to prove it by writing a paper that looks like you actually watched it. And if I see that you watched it, if I could see that you actually made it through the whole 58 minutes and you just didn't watch 10 minutes, get bored and go do something else, you'll do okay in the paper. If I could see your critical analysis, your thought process on this great, incredible, world-changing painter, you'll do just fine. But if I just get a thumbnail paper about his date of birth, his marriages, his kids, and when he died, hmm. That's not what I'm looking for. Anybody can look that up on Wikipedia. It's nice to know that information, but I'm talking about the man himself and his art. And so look at this documentary, and they, you know, and you'll you'll learn about uh, Rembrandt. Um, I had when I was in Amsterdam, I went. Uh, Rembrandt lived there for many years, and you could go into his house. Um, it's there, cost you 20 bucks, but uh, you get to go see the rooms he lived in and how small they were. And he painted some incredible paintings in these tiny rooms uh, until, he, until he couldn't afford it anymore and he had to move into new rooms. Um, also, I just thought I'd tell you that uh, for those of you and who are World War II uh, people, um, and Frank, hopefully you've heard of her, um, hid in the attic, and she was in Amsterdam. You could go to that house, too. It's rented. Uh, somebody lives in that house uh, right on the canal, and she hid in that attic for, two, I think, two years, and she wrote her famous uh, diary there. And uh, She was a Jew with her family. They were hiding in the attics when the, the Nazis took over. We're looking to put the Jews in concentration camps. And eventually they were found out and shipped off to concentration camp. And Anne Frank died in the concentration camp. But her diary survived. And other people in her family survived, actually. I do believe her father survived World War II and he escaped the whole area. But she did not make it. Young child, innocence, and Nazis uh, took that life away. Anyway, um, so these, this is a famous town where these people were. Another Dutch painter, very important painter, uh, Vermeer. I want you guys to look at another documentary. It's called Dutch 
Vermeer, V E M E E R, uh, Dutch painting, Master of Light, it's called. It's on. It's on YouTube. And um, my cat is giving me trouble right now. And um, it's on uh, YouTube. And it's, it's about 57 minutes long. Please watch that. Uh, watch them both. Try to learn something. Enjoy. And both these painters are in the chapter uh, in the textbook. Hopefully you got it by now. We're th week three. You should have it by now. Chapter 23. Rembrandt's on 125. There's on 115. Read about them. Circ, you know, if you if you didn't rent the book, underline it, and then when you go online and watch these documentaries, um, you'll learn even more. Because when you see the documentary and it's giving you all the information in a creative way, I think it will. Um, it's more. It's it's more. Hopefully, it's interesting to you. Um, presented in more of a. Um, Interesting light with music and nice camera work, whatnot. I'll print that link also in uh, the assignments. So write a paper about either one. We're going to start a discussion too, and the discussion is going to be pretty general on painters. Do you have any? Do you have any relationship to any painters, any artists? Do you know anything about uh, newer painters like Andy Warhol or John Basquiat or Julian Schnappel, Picasso, Van Gogh? I'm going to be talking about them some more this week because art painters is very, very important. I can't just do two lectures on it. Uh, it's a lifetime of work to understand these painters especially somebody like Pablo Picasso. Uh, so on the discussion, I'll, I'll post that. Give me your personal experience with art. When, I'm, when I say art, I'm talking primarily painters here. Uh, if you want to talk about sculptors and all that, that's fine also. Rodin, if you ever get to France, go to the Rodin Museum and you'll see some sculptures and you'll be shocked that a human being did those sculptures. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe you do art. Maybe you do arts and crafts. Share it in the discussion. I'll post that also today. Uh, that'll be on there for a week. you got to make some comments. Keep up on your, um, your journals and reflection. You, you'll see that um, I posted a sample. And remember, I think I mentioned it yesterday because I had a lecture yesterday. The sample is from the 17-week-long course, and so it's it's covering material that we don't we can't really cover too much. It's in the book, but we don't have time to. Uh, we've kind of kind of jump over some of the stuff because the course is only six weeks. So I'm cramming a lot in there. You might think I'm cramming a lot. We're barely scratching the surface, but so you'll see some stuff on on that sample they go well what is this we haven't done this well it's in the book it follows the book more closely because we had time to do that and everybody had the book and i know some of you probably don't have the book yet and it's okay it helps to have it but um but in the other class it was longer and more formal and uh we we're in class together and i used to we used to read out loud and stuff like that from the book not doing that this time. Uh, maybe I'll have a Zoom meeting where we try something. I'm still trying Zoom, by the way. I tried it again. Uh, I don't know what's happening. For some reason, the number I put up there for my ID, it doesn't work for you guys. Uh, I had to call the Zoom people asking why isn't it working. They haven't got back to me yet. Uh, so I'm still working on it. Hopefully, we could do a Zoom uh, meeting. Maybe you're doing Zoom meetings right now, but for some reason... I'm not having luck with it. Um, also, it's my way of meeting you guys. Maybe I can see you. Uh, I know you're seeing me right now. Um, 
but on a Zoom meeting, uh, it's kind of an introduction that I should see some of your faces and get to know you, not just your names or your desperate texts that I get. Anyway, um, so those are the two things. Dutch Painters, Chapter 23. I'm going to post the assignments tonight. They'll be due next week. Look for it. In the meantime, enjoy these documentaries. Try to think something creative. Try to stay healthy in these weird trying times. It's hot. Try to stay cool. It's not easy. Uh, and we'll get through this eventually. And uh, thank you for staying in the class. I appreciate it a lot. Um, you are appreciated. So keep up the good work. And um, I will post all this stuff tonight. And then I'll probably speak again on Friday about more art. Okay, that's it. See you later. Peace out. Jesus Christ. You need a monkey? You need a monkey? Don't you fucking back sass me? I got people on the line. Oh, she wants out. She wants out. Well, so what? Mm-hmm.